do. But wait a minute. How did you receive Christ? Mm -hmm. How did you come to Him? Because did you come to Him believing, I'm going to get into that, did you come to Him believing that you can't do what you want to do? See, because this is what it is. It was love that brought me to Him. It was love that drew me to Him. So knowing that I'm forgiven, understanding His love, because really to understand total forgiveness, you understand God's love for us. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding His love for me. So, it's not that I can go do what, that I want to go do what I want to do. What stopped me from doing what I want to go do, so to speak? Love. Love turned my heart away from the world towards God. Mm -hmm. So love got me out of the, got me out of the, uh, the motels, got me out of the clubs, got me out of all my sin. It was love that turned me right here. Not that a punishment was waiting on me. Mm -hmm. Because the law never corrected none of us to the fact that we're not sinning anymore. All right. But it is the love of, of God that causes us, you know, our minds have changed, our heart has changed, and we have turned towards God. Mm -hmm. So, what stopped you from doing what you want to do? It's God's love. If, if, if marriage, let's look at marriage. Yes. Mm -hmm. A husband and wife. Because of the mate, they love each other. That's why I left the single life. Mm -hmm. Because I'm married. I'm in love. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm in love and she forgives me, I want to still go out there and act a fool? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. So, I mean, that, that's just an example. It really can't compare to what God has done. But the one who thinks they can go do what they want to do, what's happening is they don't understand what eternal life is. Yeah. They don't understand what salvation is. Because they're basing there, if I go do what I want to do, I'm going to lose my salvation, number one. So if I'm going to lose my salvation, well, uh, I know I need something to tell me that I need the law to let me know that I can lose my salvation. Because if I'm going to do what I want to do, and I don't want to do what I want to do, so I need the law to tell me I can't do what I want to do. So you're believing that as long as the law is there and you need to be forgiven, then you're okay. Because that freedom of knowing that I'm forgiven... Mm -hmm. But God's not taking our choice from us. He's not taking our choice. He, he, we got saved. He did not make us out of robots. I still have a choice to go do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's the love of God for what he's done for me that caused me, what, to draw near to him. Amen? So, uh, um, and I'm saying this to you because if you start um, ministering to people about total forgiveness, that's the question that's going to come to you. That's the question that the challenge or the argument you're going to have is, because sooner or later they will ask, they're going to say this, are you saying that I can go do what I want to do? Because I'm forgiven. Well, do we come to Jesus to get forgiven? Or do we come to Christ to receive forgiveness? See, there's a difference. Yeah, we can't receive it. See, because when we're basing our forgiveness on our own work, our own merit, we're going to fall short. Or we're going to continue to stay under the law, under the old law to what? to try to gain our acceptance with God. So, but once I understand that forgiveness alone didn't save me in the first place, that I was forgiven before I was born, mm -hmm. it was preserved for me to receive when I got here, mm -hmm. you know, for us that believe in Christ. And so all that has to be processed in the mind of a person that's saying that, no, I can't receive that. Yeah. It causes fear. If you're saying that I'm forgiven already, I'm afraid that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go out, you know, and because they're, they're examining themselves and they don't trust themselves, which well, you shouldn't trust yourself, they're putting confidence in the flesh, but they're basing that on a behavior to mm -hmm. be right with God. And so Grace is talking about something totally different. So let, let's, let's jump in this for a minute because this is really going exactly what we're talking about. I didn't know where you really were when I came in, but. Well, that's all right. What you do, what you do. Yeah, because this, this goes right into this. And, and, I, and the reason why I did it like this here, because I did it also in my, in my other class. It's the gospel of grace, and, and I, I uh, listened to some of your, uh, some of Cheryl's teaching, so I know this is going to make sense to you, and uh, as we examine our old life, or our, our, our life when we first came to Christ, we're going to see something right here. Okay, under the old covenant, and that's why I put the old and the new, but let us think back for a minute when we came to Christ, when we heard the gospel story, we heard the gospel story, and I wrote here. And we have to examine our own self, examine our own heart. Where was, what, what was my confession to? Did I confess, not knowing me though, but did I confess under the old covenant? Or did I confess under the new covenant? 
Which I didn't know about the new covenant, old covenant when I came to Christ. Never heard of it. But that's a good question. Yeah. That's really, I didn't hear it like that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's did, did I come to Christ under the old or did I come to him under the new? Well, he was, he was born under the old covenant. Amen. Proclaiming the old covenant. Yeah. But he died to establish the new. Mm -hmm. 